this video is uh, centered around the idea of breaking down the figure into forms and figuring out how to work on forms in such a way as to not overly focus on the outer contour of a figure. The secondary topic of it is essentially learning how to make changes from the original marks that you put down. Um, this is probably the uh, third or fourth shot I've given at this pose, and each time that I do it, it gets a little bit better. And every time that I do it, I have to make a lot of changes throughout the process. So the first thing, if you're working in, in a digital medium, is that you can work in layers, and that helps a lot. If you're working in analog media, and just pencil or charcoal or whatever, be sure that you're very soft in your initial layers. Um, generally speaking, your first few layers, you probably won't be able to see from more than a couple of feet away um, if you're drawing softly enough. The main thing is that you don't want to commit to anything too early. You need to be flexible and you need to get the whole figure kind of down before you start uh, committing to any lines in particular. So you'll notice that there are several tick marks for proportions. There's one at the bottom at the feet, one in the center, uh, and then two for the head at the top. I would recommend measuring those out um, just to be sure that you're really getting the proportions that you want. Um, remember that the three things that you're focusing on are the rib cage, pelvis, and the head. Uh, the limbs are secondary to that. Um, a lot of times you can work on these all at once. I recommend kind of going left to right and whatever you do to one left side of the figure, you do to the, to the right side so that you are able to create the uh, natural symmetry of the body uh, that should happen. What are the things that you can do? You're thinking of forms and wrap lines um, around areas that are obviously cylindrical or box-like. You notice that the uh, lower leg has a couple of lines wrapped around it to create a division between the foot and ankle and one just below the knee. That shows you kind of how much the legs are bent at that point. Um, you'll notice too that the first attempt at the rib cage is pretty narrow, so I needed to go ahead and widen that out a little bit um, and make sure that the width proportions are uh, just as comfortable as the height proportions. Um, when you break down forms, initially you start with the simple forms, and then you want to start on more complicated anatomical forms. Um, one of the things that I'm doing here is using a little bit of muscle structure, not too much, but just a little bit, to create some twist and overlapping forms in the limbs. Uh, you'll notice that the legs have uh, several overlapping forms, including the, the quadricep muscles and the muscles on the inner thigh and outer part of the leg. And that kind of overlaps the pelvis and connects to the surface landmarks you see at the points of the iliac crest. Now that I'm moving into the face and head, I'm just kind of taking a stab at some hair and some quick proportions of where the eyes, nose, and mouth should be. Um, I'm definitely not satisfied with the head at this point, so later we'll have to come back and start to move it around and shift it. Um, and what I like about doing an exploration of form in this way before you even uh, were to adapt this into either a fully realized uh, life drawing or to shift directions and change it into a concept design or, or something like that is when you do it like this and then you overlay uh, either lighting on it or shadows or whatever, you kind of know exactly where the shadows should go to emphasize the form. And if you see a shadow that doesn't help with the forms, you can kind of adapt or change that. One of the things that I'm doing here is um, reducing the opacity of this bottom layer, and then I'm going to layer on top of that, it's similar to the way that you could uh, lightly erase your drawing, but leave it visible um, so that you could come back with more refined lines on top. Um, and when, when you add concept design type stuff to this, it's a, much easier to add things like clothing, armor, 
um, and embellishments that aren't actually a part of the figure that you see um, when you know where the forms are because you can um, you don't have to depend on the outline you can draw from your head a little bit more and use multiple references to create that if you're drawing two-dimensionally it's much more difficult to do that you have a little less flexibility you kind of need a reference that's uh, at least close to what you want in the end product and you'll notice here that now on this layer i'm adapting and changing and uh, picking the best lines from the under layer. You'll see that I moved the head significantly because I was cocked too far back. I've now lengthened the uh, the upper part of the arm um, and kept the forearm basically the same. Um, that opens up a little bit of negative shape around the head, so the hairline will look a little more natural. Now the head isn't pulled back really far. Now it's more in line with the spine. Um, and as things go, uh, you'll see this kind of uh, adapt. And now that the rib cage is wide enough, it makes the pelvis look normal and the legs look more proportionate. Um, at a certain point though, I'll turn off the bottom layer once I get through a pass and then you'll kind of see uh, a more pure version of the forms. Um, Remember that when you use an eraser, it's not really a mistake fixer. Um, if you're erasing stuff, that's totally fine. Um, you do have to erase sometimes, and I do erase on a fairly regular basis. But um, when you're kind of first practicing, you don't want to draw something, erase it, draw something again, erase it. Um, draw several layers and then erase into lighten up stuff slightly, then refine. Um, one of the things that I'm doing here now is I'm moving the feet from their initial position. They didn't look particularly natural um, it, because the feet didn't line up with the angle of the rest of the leg. So when you turn the feet a little bit, it's going to feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, so every time that you redraw and um, add line work, you actually are reobserving as well. And making changes. So every time you pass through the figure, you want to be sure that you uh, don't necessarily stick to your original plan. That you are free to adapt as you as you would like. I noticed that a lot of the line work got a little heavy around the uh, the figure's left shoulder, the shoulder on the right. So I raced into that. And that gave me some opportunity to refine that a little bit better. Um, and then we're going to stop a little bit early with these forms, leave them a little more open and a little undeveloped so that they can be uh, embellished upon later uh, if I want to adapt these into more of a concept design approach, uh, which is kind of what we're after with uh, the this uh, series of figure drawing exercises. But I am going to be sure that I kind of nail down the proportions first and get some anatomy in there. Um, one of the things that I'm doing now going in and adding in the, uh, the shadow core line all the way through the figure so that I know where the light hits. Um, that way, when I do add on to it, I know that I can add in such a way that uh, it creates an interesting sense of lighting. So we'll uh, work on this figure and maybe do some uh, concept type adaptations in a later video.